So we got D here from hey. B Knox, and we're talking a little bit about Spider Man Edge of Time. And for the very first time, you're going to see a live demo of it here right on our stage. D, thanks so much for joining us. And first and foremost, talk a little bit about this project and what you're hoping to bring to Spider Man fans. Well, the, uh, the uh, Spider-Man Edge of Time is actually the second Spider-Man project that we've been uh, doing at, uh, at Binox. We did Shadow Dimension. It was really well received. And now we want to bring something new, something fresh again to the Spider-Man uh, Spider license. So in Spider-Man Edge of Time, we're, bringing, uh, we're letting the player play the amazing Spider-Man uh, in present day, as well as the uh, Spider-Man 2099 in the year 2099. They have to work together uh, across time in order to solve it, uh, to prevent a catastrophic event from happening the actual death of the amazing Spider-Man. Right. So the we also have a, there's the uh, an evil mastermind uh, called uh, called Sloan uh, Walker Sloan that is uh, that has actually traveled back in time uh, and uh, to start Alchemax, the evil corporation Alchemax, years before it was supposed to uh, to start, and uh, and that created a uh, kind of a, a rift in the uh, in the uh, in the timeline that you have to be uh, to to prevent. So the two uh, Spider-Man are actually going to be able to communicate together and uh, and work together to restore uh, the timeline to where it's supposed to be. And there's some cause and effect gameplay that takes place within that, correct? Oh, definitely. The uh, the entire narrative actually has been uh, we we went directly to Peter David, which is uh, uh, co the co-creator of Spider-Man 2099, and we wanted him to craft really a really deep story, really cool, uh, with new villains and everything, and uh, and to support that narrative and that link between the characters, that's uh, why we uh, we came up with that cause and effect gameplay. So when you when as amazing, you have those uh, those key moments where you can actually uh, do something, and there's a direct impact in the Spider-Man 2099 world. Is this a picture-in-picture picture of, of of this in action right now? Is this how it unfolds? That's that's one of those. Uh, that's uh, that's a moment uh, where the the two Spider-Man will come. Communicate. In that particular sequence, uh, right now you have seen uh, Anti-Venom, which makes its first appearance in a Spider-Man uh, video game that you're actually chasing uh, through, uh, through the level. So you can see uh, that, uh, that 2099 appeared for a brief moment while he, he was uh, talking to, uh, uh, to Peter Parker or the Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, as you can see uh, right now, there's the uh, there's a, there's a bunch of new ability that's, that we've put in the game. So the hyper sense that you've just seen uh, is one of them, where you can go through lasers and dodge all sort of things. So and we've we've developed tons of new combat improvement around that abilities. Obviously, key to any Spider-Man uh, video game is going to be your interaction with the enemy. So talk a little bit about uh, who who we might see in the game. Uh, well, you might see, of course, Anti-Venom. Uh, right. We had that trailer on GameTrailers.com. Absolutely. Absolutely, it's uh, it's very cool. That's something that uh, when we were working, Sherry mentioned that was one villain that we really wanted to dig deep into and present to the fan in a new way. Uh, as uh, fans will know, uh, it's uh, anti Venom is actually Eddie Brock, which was Venom before, and now is kind of uh, uh, has been uh, reformed. To, to be anti-venom, like a good guy that can right. actually cure people. And right, stuff. I saw a comment, a lot of comments. They said, I thought he was a good guy. He's a bad guy, he's a good guy, what well, is he? He is a good guy, actually, but in our uh, in our uh, story, uh, Walker Sloan, that evil mastermind, is actually controlling anti-venom uh, through a chip that has been inserted in his head. So he can, uh, he's, uh, he becomes this puppet, uh, kind of the puppet master, because anti-venom, with his power, can actually cure Spider-Man and, and transform him into basically a human being and removing all Spider-Man nests into him, so. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so you mentioned before a corporation that was a uh, part of this whole grand scheme. Is this where we're at right now, a part yeah. of the facility regarding that corporation, or where where is this demo taking place in? Well, right now, if you look, right now, this is one of those cause and effect moments. It's in Alchemax, in that evil corporation. And right now, you have Miguel struggling right uh, within a radioactive room that was all right, but uh, unfortunately, Antivenom blew up the entire uh, corridor, leading to a series of events of the fire going through the corridor and breaking those radioactive tanks. So you have to be uh, to go and race through the corridor to, to put those tanks in a safe place. And as you can see, as you progress down the corridor, the tanks get fixed in the uh, in the 29 uh, universe, and eventually you're able to save uh, Miguel O'Hara from uh, from a certain death and continue your quest. 
Obviously, the game is looking very action-oriented. It's very fast and fluid. Talk a little bit about some of the things that you've learned from the previous game that you want to apply to this title in terms of gameplay mechanics. Uh, gameplay mechanics. Well, we wanted to be. Uh, we wanted the two Spider-Men to work together much, much more than than, uh, for example, in Shared Dimension. They were all in their own in their own separate uh, dimensions. Now the timeline are really linked. They work together. We have all those moments, those cause and effect moments, as you can see, but also a bunch of stuff, unexpected consequences as well. So you can walk into a room and all of a sudden the room's going to shift before your eyes. So, uh, like you were you were running, a, a wall will appear, and then all of a sudden uh, you have to turn left instead of turning. Right kind of a matrix style uh, approach there's also moments where you, you walk in a room that you think is quiet feels good everything's all right but uh, actually the uh, the uh, amazing do something in the past and it cranks up the security in the future so all of a sudden turrets appear lasers and and you have to fight a whole bunch of enemies so this is a, a big impact in the game uh, the uh, in the environment but also we have uh, expanded the combat a lot to uh, to go uh, and be in line with that kind of time uh, uh, time uh, timeline uh, distortion uh, uh, feeling. We're, so we're seeing 2099 now, and and two yeah. distinct gameplay styles. Correct? You want to really make them feel like very distinct. Oh, very very distinct. So so right now you're seeing 2099. Uh, uh, that is much more uh, uh, based on close combat. Uh, you can see right now that uh, he's using is uh, a new ability new to this game, uh, which we call an accelerated decoy, uh, which is a, a representation of how fast uh, Spider-Man 29 can be and almost can almost be uh, in two different places uh, at the same time. So you can use this accelerated decoy. Oh, right now you have one of those key moments where the uh, where the, uh, the a wall uh, appeared just right in front of you. But the so so the uh, so. The that uh, those, those new uh, combat abilities allow you to do all sorts of stuff. So you can, for example, if, if enemies come at you with missiles and guns and stuff, you can use that decoy to so that they will fire where you were. But you can also use it and project your decoy to, uh, to enemies uh, uh, to enemies, and uh, the decoy will, will uh, throw the enemies back at you so that you can chain more combos uh, to it. So that's, that's really, really cool. We have one of those ability is actually <coughs> at a, um, uh, uh, a time flux moment where you can actually freeze uh, all the enemies uh, right into place. So we have this. Uh, so we have all this in a position to uh, Amazing Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. So Amazing Spider-Man, we went with more web-based combat. Right. So it's heavily web uh, web-based. You can create all so sorts of things. more ranged in a way. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Much more ranged. Uh, uh, approach and uh, and also we've uh, we also put much more importance in that game on the web shots so you can do all sorts of cool stuff with web shots stick enemies to walls uh, uh, prevent enemies that have guns to to uh, to, uh, uh, to shoot at you so we've done a lot of stuff with uh, with a web shot in that game as uh, opposed to for example shadow dimensions where we played it a bit uh, a bit less I think one of the big things with any Spider-Man game is putting the player in, into the suit of Spider-Man and making them feel like this iconic superhero. How did you design the levels and the environments uh, to help Spider-Man in either state traverse them in a way that would make the player truly feel like Spider-Man? That's, that's actually a very, an excellent question. When we designed the game at the very beginning, we, oh, you see one of those time flux moments. But the, uh, so in the, uh, uh, when we designed the game, we always ask ourselves, what's the Spider-Man DNA? And Spider-Man DNA is all about wall crawling, uh, web swinging, uh, great combat, acrobatics. So we really design all the levels around that. So we have moments in the, uh, in the corridors that we've seen a bit earlier. It's really focused on web, web swinging around and really being like quick and agile through this part of the, uh, of the level. Other moments, we're really focusing on the wall crawling abilities of the, of the characters to really, uh, uh, um, uh, to really make the, uh, the player feel a Spider-Man in the end. Obviously, I think we're taking a look at a climactic cutscene oh, here that yeah. leads up to a fight. Tell us what this is. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's uh, one of the the key moment in our story where uh, the Amazing Spider-Man face off, finally uh, faces off uh, Anti Venom, Eddie Brock. So we have this uh, uh, a really uh, cool scene and between the two the two characters that uh, uh, talk to each other, and then we have the evil mastermind that is revealed to the player. Let's take a look for a second. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I always trust people who are trying to kill me. So you're the head lunatic. Well, we haven't been properly introduced. I'm the guy who's gonna stop your plans. Good luck with that. Anti-Venom, finish him. Can't! Can't! Impressive resistance, but activating all the control chips, releasing your more bestial side, should do the trick. <laughs> So, so one of the in this uh, in the sequence.
sequence that's in the portal room. This portal is actually the one that 2099 got stuck in and that's how they travel through, uh, uh, through time. So it's, it's one of those key moments where you're finally facing Katie Brock and you're gonna, you're gonna have a hard time. Obviously, villains like we talked about before are going to play a key role. We can expect, I'm sure, multiple boss fights throughout the game. Are they all kind of framed up in this type of way? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You can, you, there's a lot of, uh, of additional surprises that we've not yet revealed sure. in the plot. We have additional villains, uh, some known ones, some that have never been uh, seen before, uh, something of, some that we've created for a game. So there's a lot of stuff uh, that we can uh, that we still have to show to uh, the players that they can look forward to. Excellent. Well, I think that uh, while we watch this fight unfold, we're going to go to Justine to check out a couple of uh, questions from our audience via Twitter and Facebook. Justine, what do you got? Nathaniel A. on Facebook is asking if the game is going to tie in with previous games at all. The, uh, the, the game actually, Edge of Time is really its own story. It was not, it's not meant to be tied to any of the other Spider-Man games. When we, uh, when we uh, took uh, Peter David, the co-creator of 2099, to craft our story, we really wanted to have a, a, a very deep uh, storyline, so we locked himself in a, in a conference room with our creative director, and basically we had to come up with something that would be the, one of the best Spider-Man uh, uh, story ever told in a video game. So no, it's not tied to any other Spider-Man game. Um, how close do you guys work with Marvel on the stories? The, uh, when we, we work with Marvel uh, in, uh, in many ways, actually. Uh, the first, uh, first thing, we always want to be to really stay true uh, to the character so, uh, to, and to the Marvel Universe. So that's why we went with, with Peter Davis, as I said, a, usual, uh, a, a huge uh, uh, veteran in the Marvel Universe. So he really helped us craft that story that would be uh, true to, to the character. And of course, Marvel is involved directly in a process where we've been uh, they've been approving uh, what we are doing. Uh, we're we're actually killing Spider-Man in our pro in our in our game. So that's something that Marvel would have would have wanted to hear about, you know. <laughs> so we uh, so they're involved in that process and they give us all sort of great suggestions. Some of which uh, are actually in the game. So oh. let's keep answering those questions on Twitter. All right, we have one more from Twitter from Raffle Chopper B. And they said they're watching this live, and they may have missed it, but they saw a Spider-Man character pop up in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. What was that? The uh, the that's one of those uh, those moments where the two Spider-Man are actually talking to each other because we have uh, we have developed a system. All our story has been developed as a kind of two. Uh, parallel storylines. So there's always the, the two uh, Spider-Man are actually always uh, um, uh, uh, moving forward. There's this sense of urgency, and they've, uh, we've uh, we've really developed something that's that's awesome. Actually, you could you can play the entire game with almost no load, loading screen from beginning to the end. So it's it's really a continuous experience. And those moments where you see the character in the screen, that's when you get to see where the other character is at in his storyline, what he's saying to you. So he might be sometimes he's, got, he's just going to be hanging uh, next to a door. Looking Looking for his path and asking you for direction. Other time he's going to be in the middle of a fight. Uh, other time he's going to be in 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 really deep trouble, and you're going to have to help him. So that's that, those kind of moments where you get a glimpse of what the other character are. And and at the um, and and uh, when you when you're done playing it with a character, you have this uh, this moment where you see in a picture in picture what the other Spider-Man is doing, and the picture in picture basically takes over the entire screen, and you immediately get to play the other Spider-Man. So I always push this sense of urgency because Spider-Man's going to die. Spider-Man is going to die. Thanks so much for your questions. Yeah. We appreciate that, Justin. We appreciate your time, D, Thank as you. well.